Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the Wii, what you can do through the CLI channel. I am Vangelis and today we will be exploring Rust Safety vs C Sharp Part 2. So I will continue on the safety aspect of Rust and I will provide you an example uh, how Rust protects us from ourselves and from bugs that we write. So, we don't need PHP Storm. I have uh, written two, we don't need this either. I have written two identical almost programs and I want to explore them with you and I want to show you how they differ and how Rust protects us. So, this is the program. It's very simple. We have an item struct, as you can see, an object, let's say, which has an ID and an expression key, which is a string. And uh, we just have a static method on the item. Uh, we create a copy of this item. So we accept a reference and we create a new item and we return it as a copy, as you can see. Uh, and a third, uh, in, a third ingredient of the whole program is this uh, evaluate expression uh, method on a helper's struct, which accepts the string, the expression key, and returns true or false depending on if the expression key is foo in our specific use case. And this is how we use the program. We create our first item. We create a copy of the item. And then we use the expression key of the copy item of item two, and we get our result. So as you can see, we initialize the first item to foo as the expression key. So the end result that we are expecting here is true. Because if you remember, it, we return uh, true when this is uh, foo. So let's run the program. And yes, as you can see very well here, our result is true. Let me rerun. The result is true, as you can see. Just to make sure that this is correct. Let's add an A here and let's rerun. And we have a result that is false, as you can see. So pretty straightforward. This is the Rust program. Let's check the C Sharp program. So we have exactly the same thing. We initialize the item to full. We create a copy and we run the this evaluate expression. So let's see what we will get. As you see, we get a false back. Let's add the name here. Let's rerun. And we get a false. So even if we have foo or foo a, we get a false. Now, as I said, these programs are almost identical. They have a difference and I will show you the difference. And the difference li lies in this create copy method. So if I manage to have these two side by side, we don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this. So. Let's check the two create copy uh, methods, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, the difference is that here in Rust, we initialize all the fields of the struct, the two fields ID and expression key, and we initialize them by providing the values from the item that we get. So all the fields are initialized correctly. Here though, in the item create copy, 
we create a new object, we set the ID, and then we return the object, as you can see. So no expression key is set on the object. Yet we have no, um, let's say, feedback from the compiler. We have no feedback from the compiler that something is wrong. Now let me try the. Let's try uh, dot net run. What will you get? We get here. We get the result which is false, and still we have nothing, no feedback from the compiler, as you can see. Zero warnings, zero errors. Yet these two programs uh, provide us with different results. As you can see, one returns false and the other returns true. As you can see, this one returns true and this one returns false. So, you may say that uh, this is a very contrived example or that uh, I am uh, uh, foolish that I created such um, an example or that uh, I am stupid or that whoever does this is stupid and he doesn't know how to code, etc. But uh, to tell you the truth, this example is taken from uh, production code and in fact I had to address a bug related to this exact setup and you may think that uh, this is very obvious, the problem is very obvious here because we are not initializing the, the second field but imagine that uh, this uh, class had uh, 20 fields, not just two fields or 30 fields and you had this create copy uh, method and uh, a new field was added here at the item. Let's say public uh, string uh, new field. But uh, due to the fact that this code is not uh, enforced in some way and due to the fact that this uh, piece of code is not near the let's say the definition of the properties here of the fields you forget to add your new field to the create copy method so you are uh, right away faced with a bug as i said this is a, an example that is uh, taken from a production code from real code so i would really um, expect to have some kind of feedback from the compiler to save me from these kind of bugs and this is indeed what Rust does and we will verify this by coming here and in the create copy commenting out the initialization of the, of the second field and trying to run this program Right away you see that we have missing field expression key in initializer of item. So the Rust compiler does not allow us to, to shoot our foot and to create bugs in our code base because the static analysis shows that we have an initialized field. This uh, protects us from bugs as you understand and protects us from misbehavior of our, of our program, program because as I said I had to address such a bug because this whole setup and this whole evaluation was returning a wrong result due to the fact that my copy let's say was not correctly initialized. So this is the essence of the video. Uh, 
And I want to stress again the safety that Rust uh, provides, even in so simple cases like this, uh, which uh, can become, can slip your attention, as I said, even though it is quite uh, a simple, let's say, setup. It is very easy to slip your attention when you have to handle multiple fields in a big code base. And probably if you don't have a good overview of the, of the code base, uh, because we know that uh, in, a, in a specific code base, not only one person works on it, but people come and go, new people can come, uh, and uh, if you don't have some kind of protection, like the protection that the Rust compiler provides, it is very easy and very trivial to introduce such bugs in your code base. So this is uh, all the info that I wanted to share. I am really interested in uh, your comments, uh, what you have to say about this. I usually get a lot of comments regarding, uh, you know, trying to defend, let's say, C Sharp or whatever other language. And what I want to say is that I'm not trying to bash on C Sharp or other language, um, languages. I'm just trying to promote Rust. Promoting Rust does not mean that at the same time I'm bashing C Sharp. I'm just stating facts. Of course, there are um, there are ways to protect yourself from such bugs in C Sharp too, but I would expect, uh, as I said earlier, I would expect that for such trivial cases, the compiler would protect me from myself. Uh, that's it. I will be waiting for your comments. Until next time, have a very nice day.